Your flash drive comes with three operating systems on it, Windows 7, Windows XP, and Linux Ubuntu. You can install either one of the three from the flash drive or run them live straight from the flash drive without modifying the computer. In this example, we're going to look like we're going to install Windows 7. For demonstration purposes, we're not really going to install it. But I'm going to show you how to by the buttons that you click on and the selections you make. As you see from the choice made, Windows is starting up the process of installing Windows 7. Choose to click Next, Install Now, and accept the terms and custom advance. Now you see the drives that are installed on this computer drive. This O, this 1, this 2, this 3, these are all hard drives in the computer. You can click on Drive Options and choose to partition the drives if you don't want to use the whole space as far as the size. Or you can change it and go ahead and click Next. Okay, here we're going to show your second option, which is XP install or the live environment with over 200 different programs you can use. We'll get into the password changer for now, showing you how you can remove passwords on Windows. These lines of text that are scrolling by you don't have to pay attention to. Here's the interesting part. You choose the default and go ahead and let it go there and choose hit enter and uh, you notice number two is the hard drive with the windows is on it so you can be either one or two. You can choose one for password reset it's set there by default then you got your choices one through four that allow you to remove the passwords. You got administrator, guest, and help assistance for user accounts. Administrator is set by default. You can choose one to edit and you and remove the password or four to clear out. Notice when I'm typing guest, it has to be exactly as it shows the username. So it's got to be a capital G and lower cases. explanation mark starts you over in case you make a mistake choose four and that unlocks the drive so you can clear it out and one to clear it and one again to show it same thing for the last one help assistant and remember you have to type it in exactly how you see it Hit forward to unlock it. Type in help assistant again. And this is pretty much for any usernames you see on there. Then one to clear it. Explanation to go back. One to edit and use it. You'll see they're all blank now. And you just restart the computer and you'll be able to go right in. Oh, let me say you have to write the changes. Click yes to apply the changes. Here we will go again back to the menu showing you your choices. We we'll go into the second option and here we will display how do you install Windows XP. Pretty much click the first option. That second option is set by default because it's a two-step process but you're going to manually click the first option first and after you go through the installation phase and reboot you choose a second option and, and it will continue from there but remember this is only an example and we're not really going to install Windows XP but let's just show you how press enter F8 to confirm you'll see your hard drives that are on the system that are available for installation you click enter you can delete the partition if you want and clear it out or format it for quick format and the system reboots and then you choose the second phase but like I said we were just demonstrating let's go ahead and choose the 
live version of Windows XP. And this is where you have over 200 programs available to use to remove spyware and viruses, fix the hard drives for any errors. You can uh, back up data and files from different folders and save them before you choose to uh, wipe a computer out. If you do decide to reinstall Windows, whether it's XP or 7, you can do this. I'm showing you the environment. Here you can change the screen settings so it will be bigger on your screen for a higher resolution. And you click on the Windows Explorer or first you can click on the start and see the programs that are available to you. A lot of them you don't see. You have to go into another area which I'll be showing you. And that'll be here inside the Windows Explorer and then inside the, the HB. First I'll show you these files here that um, in case you want to go get the user accounts and documents and settings. This is good for if you want to go ahead and get files off the computer that's needed before you erase it. People got resumes and Word documents, pictures and photos and music. This is just good for backing a data up, knowing how to navigate through the Explorer and go into the file system. Here you choose HBXP, and these are all the files that are available to you so that you can um, use these tools to scan and fix a computer and for maintenance and upkeep. But first we're going to activate the network so that you can go out onto the internet in case you're running anti-spyware programs or antivirus software that needs access to the internet in order to download its driver's database for their spyware. If it has to download the database of anti-spyware and anti-virus um, definitions to be updated as well as drivers for the hardware this is how you activate the network so you got internet activity and the anti-spyware and antivirus programs will be fully updated so it can tackle the new spyware and viruses that exist currently. This example here is a program called Super Anti-Spyware. The first thing it does on its own is upon starting it, it immediately goes to the internet to its server and downloads the database so it can be fully updated. That's an error on my system by virtual hard drive space. So you can click scan your hard drive, scan your computer, and you can choose the hard drive that you want to scan. In this case, on mine it would be E for a Windows XP hard drive. So you can go back and we'll look. I'm just going to check E. You can look at all your choices, a quick scan, a complete scan, custom scan if you want to just choose individual folders. You can go right to the My Computer and go to a hard drive and then go directly to a folder if you like. Here we'll just choose a quick scan. For demonstrating purposes, notice how I have it set up to find spyware and viruses, root kits. These are strong viruses that, that start every time the computer starts. will allow it to go through a complete scan and, and in the end you can just click next so you can remove these viruses and all of this spyware viruses worms trojan horses you, hear, you will hear many different words for them they all consider malware for malicious programs and now the scan is complete you have it shows you the number of how many found. You can click next. It would automatically quarantine and remove them. You can choose reboot. But at this point we're not going to reboot. In the live environment you're not going to reboot. You're just going to let it scan, fix, remove them and use the next tool. And then so on. You're going to use the next tool and the next tool because you want to scan and clean your system. 
So going back to the tools, looking for the next program to run. This program here is called Auto Runs. Like the one program called Hijack This that we'll get into later on the Windows 7 um, live version, Hijack This is the one program to scan the registry. This program him called, called Auto Runs, it shows every exact thing that starts when the computer loads. And you can narrow down whatever you want to stop, viruses, spyware, and you got to be careful with it because you can actually stop programs that's meant to be ran by Windows. So you're going to look and identify based on the tabs and you'll be able to see some of the programs like American Online, iTunes, and certain programs like HP for the printers and scanners. They automatically load up services and drivers that run. But you'll be able to identify some things that shouldn't be running, which probably is going to be malicious programs under the category of a spyware or a virus. And you can save your changes and come out of this program. And it's pretty simple as that. Program called Crap Cleaner. And it's good for scanning and cleaning the registry, cleaning the disks up for temporary files that's left behind, uh, that's not removed, so they free up some disk space. It's pretty. It falls under the category of optimizing the, the system so it keep it running good and you can use it like once a week this here you can use tools to uninstall software this shows what starts up automatically when the computer cuts on for programs you don't want to start now the defragging program Every now and then it's good to run this. Depends on how much copying and deleting files that you do on your computer. Because eventually if you do a lot of copying and deleting your your hard drive will get fragmented because the files will be scattered all over in different places instead of in a continuous form. So eventually you want to defrag the hard drive. This is part of optimizing the computer for running at a peak performance. And it's showing you all the files, all the programs on here that exist. Like I say, you have many of them. Now this program here, Partition Wizard. The good thing about this program, if you're backing up files, like I said earlier, getting files off the person's computer, photos and pictures, and like I said, with uh, resumes and Word documents, you, if you don't have an external hard drive to copy them to, it's like if it's mega, multiple gigabytes of space, you can use the existing hard drive in the person's computer by repartitioning it. In this case, you can click on the drive, which, which, bit, which would be your startup drive if there's only one drive in the computer. So you can click on it, and then you can resize it and make a whole new partition and re give, you, give yourself a new partition letter with a name for it, and then you can copy the files from what you want to keep and save over to the new partition. It would be like adding a second hard drive to your computer. Here is the port where you resize it, lowering it, and notice the part on the left is in yellow. All that means is that that's the data that's already on the hard drive. So you won't affect that. You won't go past that as you scroll to the left. Everything in the white is free. So the yellow is what's already there. Now we created some space and uh, you delete it and you can name it if you want to give it to I call it saved click OK now we got a new drive letter H to save which is good for saving your files and copying over to there and then if you want to wipe out the computer and reinstall to the drive you finish that you got your files that you saved over, over the other partition that you can put back on the drive after you install Windows and then you can restart your computer and that's it for this part